um, Hi, St. Timothy's. I'm John Paul Von Arts. You may recognize me from the parish mission. The St. Timothy's Lenten Penance Service is Tuesday, March 5th at 7 p.m. in the church. We'll have 10 priests available to hear confessions. And of course, join us for Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent at 7 p.m. The next Stations of the Cross will be held by the Children's and Youth Faith Formation Team with a soup dinner at 5.30 p.m. Join us for Catholicism 101 every Sunday in the hall at 10.15 a.m. as we explore the teachings and traditions of the Catholic faith. This Sunday's topic is the third and fourth commandments. We hope to see you there. If you are interested in becoming Catholic or receiving your other sacraments, please contact our Director of Adult Evangelization and Faith Formation, Matt Zeminick. The next Revival Night is on Wednesday, March 6th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Join us for a night of powerful message, praise and worship, and adoration. Child care is offered free of charge for ages one through fifth grade upon reservation. And Walking with Moms Ministry will host a diaper drive after all masses on March 9th and 10th. We are looking for baby diapers sizes four, five, and six. All donations will benefit the Life Center of Santa Ana and St. Timothy's Food Pantry. And lastly, if you are a newly registered parishioner, St. Timothy's will host a welcome reception on Sunday, March 10th after the 11 a.m. mass Enjoy some appetizers, meet some fellow parishioners and Father Patrick, as well as take a tour of the parish. And that's all of the announcements for today. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Timothy Parish as we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent. There will be a blessing of all marriages celebrating anniversaries in the month of March following communion. Be sure to silence your cell phones so that we all might worship without distraction. The celebrant of this Mass is Father mm -hmm. Patrick. And we invite you to join us as we sing Jesus, Hope of the World. Jesus, Hope of Jesus Christ. 
so heart's desire. Come to us, O saving love. Come, heart's desire. Come, saving love. Banish our doubt and our fear. Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. I did think that because it was raining, we would be a little light at Mass today, but we got a packed house, so congratulations to you. I do uh, caution you as you're walking on the tile to be a little careful so that you don't slip because some areas are a little bit wet. So just uh, exercise caution when you're walking. And today we also will be celebrating at this Mass our first scrutiny with our elect who will be baptized at Easter, so we welcome them especially today. And my brothers and sisters, to better prepare ourselves to enter into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his pardon and peace. Lord Jesus, you raise us to Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we who are bowed down by our conscience may be always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. This time I invite all of our young people who will be going to children's liturgy the word forward, come forward at this time. All young, all of our young ones. Hello. And any parents, if you want to uh, accompany your children, you may come with them as well. Heavenly Father, we ask that you send a very special blessing upon our young ones here. As they go and reflect really on the word of God, may they know how much you care and love for them. And we bless them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may go in peace. God bless you. Lord, send your blessing down, down upon your children, that they may hear your word, hear your word with gladness. Lord, send your blessing down, down upon your children.
from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods beside me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth. You shall not bow down before them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me. Down to the third and fourth generation but bestowing mercy down to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or your daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you In six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But on the seventh day, he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord.
Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for He is our God and we are the people. He shepherds the flock He guides. If today you hear His voice, harden A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, 
How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus said, answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who has given us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. And Jesus answered her, You are right in saying I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place of worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with the woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come see a man who has told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? Then he went out to the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to him, to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The re reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Again, I was really thinking our church would be empty because of the rain, but so I'm very proud of all of you for enduring this, this uh, rain and being here today. Because for us in the church, it really is an important day as we celebrate the first scrutiny with our elect today. And uh, so for the next three Sundays, we'll, uh, we'll be celebrating scrutiny one, two, and three. And today, 
we, re, we reflect on this very beautiful story of the woman at the well, and it reflects a lot on baptism. And so the elect who are coming into the church, uh, they will be baptized at Easter. And so this is a very appropriate reading for them. And when we say the word scrutiny, we're not talking about us scrutinizing them, but they themselves scrutinizing themselves as they prepare to walk into something very important and very significant in their lives as they turn away from their old way of life and receive baptism and receive be incorporated into the body of Christ. So today we have this really beautiful story of the woman at the well, and if many of you have watched any type of, of film, movie, there, this, this scene has been portrayed many times, and it is such a beautiful, a beautiful interaction between Jesus and this woman. So we have this woman who is coming to the well. Jesus, of course, is sitting there at noon, and there are some, some interesting things and facts about uh, this woman. First of all, she's coming at noon, which for many of the people, you know, this is the hottest part of the day, and you don't come to the well at noontime. You, more than likely, you would come in the early morning so that you could draw water when it was cool because these, these containers that they were carrying, these jars, would weigh about 40 pounds, and so not only are they carrying heavy weight, they're also having to do it, you know, and they're wanting to do it in a cooler time of the day, but this woman comes at noon when it's hot, and there's nobody else there. So it tells us that she's in many ways been ostracized from the community, that she's not welcomed, and she's not, or, or, or else she's also placed herself outside of the community. They probably judge her, they probably talk about her, and so it's probably uncomfortable for her to want to be around the other, the other women, the other people, and so she comes when she doesn't have to interact with them. But in this moment, when she's coming to get water, water for her daily needs of washing, cooking, you know, hydrating herself, you know, giving her the water that she needs to live, she'll have to come back every day because this water will not last. And if we look at it as, as the water that the world gives us, the water of the world, the, the water that the world gives us will never satisfy us and will always leave us wanting. But here she comes because she needs it for her survival, and she encounters Jesus in this very beautiful encounter where he says, you know, you come here daily for water that's never going to satisfy you, but I will give you the water that will satisfy you for eternal life. And she's intrigued. And he says something to her. She goes, you know, go and call your husband and come back. And it, it seems like maybe Jesus is kind of trying to needle her a little bit, maybe to shame her, make her feel bad about herself. But the reason why Jesus brings this up, he says, go call your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And he says, you are right in saying that you don't have a husband for you have had five husbands and the one that you have now is not your husband. He's not saying this to make her feel bad, make her shame, ashamed, but he's going to the heart of an area in her life where she needs to be healed. What he wants to do is reveal it to her so that she can lay it out before God so that she can finally be transformed in that one part because apparently this woman has problems with relationships in her life. And God wants to finally take that, bless it, and heal it so that that's not, no longer a part of her life. And so he does. He brings that out. And in that moment, in that revelation of her sin, of her brokenness, she begins to recognize that this isn't just any man sitting before her, but it could possibly be the Messiah, the one called the Christ. And what he offers her through healing, and we, when he talks about this, this life-giving water, when she hears life-giving water, and many times in, the, in, the, in their traditions, before somebody would get married, the bride would go to uh, purify herself in life-giving water so that she'd be purified before she goes. And this is not a, an, a, a, a sinful pur purification, but purification to be worthy to be in the temple, both men and women went through this. So when she heard this life-giving water, she heard something about being purified, being made whole. So she wants this. She understands her own brokenness. 
And she doesn't want this water from the well anymore, but she wants something that can take her to a higher level, a higher level of healing. And this is what Jesus is offering her, and this is where she begins to realize that this isn't just any person in front of her, but possibly the Messiah. And to our elect, for those of you who will be baptized in this scrutiny today, Jesus asks you to bear open your heart to those areas of your life that need to be healed, that need to be purified, that need to be sanctified, so that when you enter into those waters of baptism, you're not entering to waters that will never satisfy you, but you're entering to waters that will truly heal you through the forgiveness of your sins and the transformation of who you are. And so this is the beautiful thing about this, this scrutiny today. But it, it's a scrutiny that we all can participate in one way or another, that God does reveal to us our sin in one way or another, whether it is through the, the correction of another person or through our own prayer life where all of a sudden in our hearts we realize that there is an area of our life that has still not been touched by Christ, that the living water still needs to purify and sanctify. And so this is an opportunity today for us as we invite the elect forward and we, we allow them to scrutinize themselves, that we allow ourselves to also participate in this moment, to really bear open everything that we are, to allow God to reveal to those areas of our life again that, that need healing, that need sanctification, that need transformation. Because that is why Christ comes here. He comes here to heal. And he comes here to give us a life-giving water a water that will never thirst again because we have truly encountered the Christ, the Son of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This time I invite the elect and their godparents to please come forward. And this morning I'm going to have you face the altar. And God, parents, I'm going to ask you to stand behind uh, the elect and place your right hands on their right shoulders. And come closer to the altar, please. And I'm going to have you guys move over just a little bit. Yeah, you're going to need to come to the altar. So those of you who don't have a space, come over here. Come over here to the end. Come over here to the end. To the assembly, I, ask that I invite you to please stand. Let us pray in silence for these elect that they will be given a spirit of repentance, a sense of sin, and pray for, and that they would receive the true, freed true freedom of the children of God. To the elect, I invite you to kneel, and if you are not able, bow your heads and pray. So the elect, if you can kneel, please kneel, and if you're not able to, just bow your heads. And you can kneel on the steps. You can kneel one more up on the steps. Kneel up on the steps, a little better for your legs, your knees. There you go. Go ahead and come up. Let's just get over just a little bit. There you go. My brothers and sisters, today we join with our elect in the prayers they request from you, their community. 
They come before you and God asking for forgiveness for past failings and for an abundance of God's grace to help them continue the journey in faith as they prepare for their baptism at the great Easter vigil. Let us pray for these elect whom the church has confidently chosen. May they complete their long preparation at the Paschal Feast. Find Christ in the sacraments. That, like the woman of Samaria, our elect may review their lives before Christ and acknowledge their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be freed from anger and resentment and learn to forgive those who have hurt them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the living water of Christ wash away all past sins and bring them peace and confidence in the mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That by recognizing the face of Christ in all people, our elect may grow in patience and acceptance of others and in loving compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our elect may be freed of all addictions and unhealthy relationships and their hearts be satisfied by God's continuing love and the support of their community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That their families may also put their hope in Christ and find peace, holiness, health, and happiness in him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we ourselves, in preparation for the Easter feast, may seek a change of heart, give ourselves to prayer, and persevere in our good works. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of Christina and Lilia Sagra, an eternal rest for Juan Alcaide Sr., let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of power, you sent your Son to be our Savior. Grant that our elect, who like the woman of Samaria thirst for living water, may turn to the Lord as they hear his word and acknowledge the sins and weakness that weigh them down. Protect them from the vein of reliance on self and defend them from the power of Satan. Free them from the spirit of deceit so that admitting the wrongs they have done, they may attain purity of heart and advance on the way to salvation. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
At the assembly, I invite you to extend your hands in blessing over our elect. Lord Jesus, you are the fountain for which they thirst. You are the master whom they seek. In your presence, they dare not claim to be without sin, for you alone are the Holy One of God. They open their hearts to you in faith. They confess their faults and lay bare their hidden wounds. In your love, free them from their infirmities, heal their sickness, quench their thirst, and give them peace. In the power of your name, which we call upon you in faith, stand by them now and heal them. Rule over that spirit of evil conquered by your rising from the dead. Show your elect the way to salvation in the Holy Spirit, that they may come to worship the Father in truth, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To the elect, I invite you to remain here, and godparents, uh, you may go back to your seat and be seated along with the assembly. The elect, I invite you to please stand. My friends, today we are Today we journeyed to the well and there discovered that Jesus Christ is the living water that quenches every thirst. As your journey toward initiation and reception continues, look to Christ to be the way that leads you to freedom from sin. Be assured of our love, care, and prayerful support. And we look forward to the day when you will join us at the table of the Eucharist. You may now go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have called us by our name, we belong to you. You have called us by our name, and we are yours. You have called us by our name, we belong. song for preparation of the gifts is Come Thou Font.
God, the Almighty Father, Lord, be pleased, O Lord, with the sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for a water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with the angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly, willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his brother bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. God bless you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not worthy to enter but only say the word, and my soul shall be you. remembrance.
see his body, his blood, know that he has overcome every trial we will face. None too lost to be saved, none too broken or ashamed, all are welcome in this place. By your mercy we Respond to 
before we have our prayer after communion, I'm going to invite all those couples who are celebrating a wedding anniversary in the month of March to please stand. And for those of you who are remaining seated, uh, please help me bless them by extending your hands in prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of married life. We thank you for these couples as they remember and celebrate their wedding anniversaries this month. Look on them with kindness today for amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and grant them the gifts of unity and peace. They may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. And we bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. And let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the archangel. We invite you to join us as we sing Beyond the Days. Oh, 